All right, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, of course, as my colleague pointed out during this uh, introductory session, it becomes uh, very important to, uh, to in fact to create a strong landscape that uh, combines advantages of communications, computing, networking, and of course, together with the new platforms of data learning uh, uh, based optimization. So uh, before actually delving into the details of, uh, of MC RANs, of uh, hybrid cloud mobile edge computing, let's recap a few things about, about CRAN, about cloud radio access networks, uh, to speak about the provisioning and the prospect capabilities of uh, of, of, of CRANs. All right, so that's uh, uh, the idea in here. Uh, I'm going to start speaking about uh, traditional um, radio access networks. Um, how does it work? How eventually you have, in fact, a sort of transmitter, a certain bands, a base band unit. How do they connect together? What is the issue eventually that have uh, that have what's the issues that have eventually evolved and uh, pushed towards looking into more of of, uh, of of separation between the control plane and the data plane and 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 so on and so forth, which we uh, we uh, we call about uh, which we call cloud radio access networks. Of course, there's nowadays as well this idea of self-free MIMO. How is self-free MIMO compared to CRANs? What are uh, the basic enablers of cloud radio access network operation, in particular the front hauling uh, aspects? Uh, what is the function splitting in there? Uh, what are the ma major uh, sharing strategy, whether it's compression or what is data sharing, um, which are utilized in the recent literature? Of course, what are the limitations, the prospects, and the challenges, which will pave the way towards start discussing some of those more complex systems, such as um, uh, 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 multiple cloud radio access networks, hybrid cloud, mobile edge computing networks, and so on and so forth. All right, so this is uh, in a way just a, a list of papers uh, that have worked on cloud rate, uh, cloud run in, 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 in details. Um, uh, there's, of course, uh, the work has gone in early uh, uh, 2010, where uh, some of those uh, discussion on uh, on data sharing strategy, on single RAN, multiple multiple cloud RAN, and so on and so forth. We have ourselves done some some a good number of work on the topic, and of course, I'm going to be discussing some of the uh, both the traditional radio access network and the mobile. Uh, in a way, and the and, uh, and the cloud radio access networks um, that the stems out of, of such networks. So the idea in traditional radio access networks is that you would have uh, some base station, but of course this base station is 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 uh, collocated with a base band unit. So you have um, a, a collocation between the base ba base band unit and the radio unit, the radio unit, uh, the distributed of course base band unit here. Um, uh, with remote radio unit is connected uh, via fibers. We have so, a certain fiber connection that connects the uh, baseband unit with the um, uh, uh, remote radio unit. And of course, the, you will have eventually some separate equipment rooms with facilities. So you need some uh, facilities uh, for every cells. And of course, this would require some sort of uh, uh, co complications in the setup. Uh, especially if you need to eventually serve huge cells, huge number of cells, uh, such as the case in, in nowadays uh, multi multi landscape type of uh, radio access technologies. So more cells, it requires more facilities. You require to uh, to cover the same area as in previous generations, and that's exactly the discussion in the in the current um, in the current generation. So you need the higher frequencies. You need a small coverage area, and of course you need to eventually uh, to start discussing more advanced technologies, such uh, such in fact. Um, issues or challenges eventually gave uh, gave uh, uh, gave birth to uh, the comp again in, in early uh, 2010s and so on. People started discussing the coordinated money points transmission. The idea is you would have in a way a joint resource allocation or joint signal processing among multiple cells. So you have a large number of cells. Um, and they are, of course, shortened distance lead to uh, to huge interference issues in between. That's why you need to start mitigating interference by developing some of those comp or what we call the coordinated multipoint uh, systems. And uh, however, <clears throat> such a coordinated a coordination in terms of of of, uh, of signal processing, in terms of data sharing, eventually is limited by uh, many issues, such as the high delay. Uh, for this sort of communication of, of data. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, when you have low bandwidth because of the shortage of facilities, of resources, uh, you would be running into, uh, into some particular problems. That's why 
uh, an actual uh, solution to, pi ba to, pi to bypass the traditional radio access network is by having what we call the cloud run. So the cloud run is in a way, um, it, pro it provides uh, a clean, uh, a way for centralized processing, but in also is having this advantage of coll collaboration. So we have a collaborative radio, you have an actual cloud of, uh, of, of radio access network or, or cloud radio access network. So you will have uh, a, a baseband unit where you will have the resource pooling and the virtualization. And of course here you will be providing a data network uh, or data center network topology. So that is, you have basically an actual uh, uh, data uh, center. You will have uh, all uh, uh, the, the, the centralized processing uh, coming into this particular place. And then eventually a lot of control will come into the picture that will be run on, on, on such uh, strong centralized processing. Uh, on, the, on the other part, you will have some distributed base stations. These base stations, uh, usually they are uh, in a way, uh, uh, they happen to be uh, on the lower, um, uh, uh, the lower complexity than the strong base band unit. So this is in a way what we call the separation between the, the control plane and the data plane. So then the data plane, that's truly where uh, you, you, the data plane, this is where you center, you eventually will be sending the information by some of those also called remote radio units. On the baseband unit and, uh, and, and the place where we have resource pooling and virtualization, you will have the chance to actually run some very sophisticated algorithm, some centralized sort of processing, and eventually um, spread uh, uh, or democratize such decision, so decision through the front hall links towards the, the, the base station, right? So that's exactly what we call the physical layer uh, coordination. Um, and of course, you would need to have some of those high-speed digital uh, front hall links. So this is the idea um, by separating the, 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 the planes between a control plane at the center and the data plane at the distributed base station, you can eventually enable some efficient radio resource allocation uh, for the goal of mitigating the interference stemming from this dense uh, super dense network and ultra dense network. Of course, uh, uh, this is the idea. And of course, people nowadays have been asking the question, uh, how is CRAN different from uh, from self-free MIMO. And what we claim uh, and strongly claim is that in fact, self-free MIMO is in fact rather a physical layer technology. So it's in a way similar to what also was, was called uh, maybe about a, a decade or two as, uh, as, as network MIMO or distributed MIMO. In the situation you will have uh, neighboring base stations, access point, they are serving user jointly. And of course here you will have to uh, do some of those coherent signal processing uh, in order to uh, increase or improve the signal power, to mitigate the interference, and to alleviate the cell boundaries. The CRAN, on the other hand, is more, it's a much bigger framework. It's actually a network deployment, which in fact also includes cell-free MIMO as part of it. This is the idea here in network deployment architecture is that you will have, uh, you're moving strong uh, the strong capabilities for signal processing and interference mitigation and whatnot into some very strong processors and eventually you this is in fact in somehow among the enabling or among the advantages that you can get is the advantages that eventually self-free MIMO requires so in fact in this situation you are split you you are splitting the control and the data plane to get a new architecture that can have multiple advantages and of course uh, some of them will be discussed eventually uh, in the rest uh, of, of, of today's talk and um, but most importantly eventually they will enable many of the features of self-free MIMO. Uh, an important aspect also to discuss in this context is uh, is a front hauling. So basically, uh, you would require eventually uh, to have some uh, strong front hauling links to communicate the central pool to the distributed base stations. And that, of, of course, the performance here will be a function of the capacity of those capacity limited front, front, front hauling. links. So you need high speed final capacity uh, digital links. And that's exactly what we call uh, front hauling. So many of the interference mitigation algorithms and techniques eventually become strong function of how powerful, how fast, how um, uh, latency sensitive such front hall links they are in terms of encoding the user messages across the multiple base stations. And in fact, the literature uh, distinguishes between two types of um, of, of, down, of of front hauling. One of them is called compression, and one of call one of them is called data sharing. And for the sake of completeness, I'll be next speaking about these two 
uh, different things uh, just to highlight what each one uh, in fact means so data sharing is very simple in data sharing uh, and sorry in compression and you have data sharing in compression it's very simple the idea is that uh, you actually compress the information at the baseband unit before sending it to the distributed base stations so the baseband processing um, uh, 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 only here at the central processing uh, was uh, and you keep the base station to be at very low complex sort of base stations so the pre-coded analog signals are compressed a priori at the cloud or at the central process central baseband unit they're forwarded to the base station over finite capacity front hole links and eventually the base station will simply be acting as um, as a relay so that's basically uh, this is uh, this particular strategy usually is called compress at the base station and forward through the front hole links to the base station that we call compression strategy another one is the data sharing strategy again as the title suggests the data sh sharing strategy um, focuses on sharing the user messages um, uh, as they are from the uh, from the cloud towards the base stations. Now the base station here will be a little bit more complex, and eventually the base station here will itself be encoding or compressing or beam forming the information towards the user. So uh, you share uh, the user's messages with base station via the front hole links, and that of course that strategy oftentimes is also is called decode and forward type of uh, of relay. So the literature, of course, distinguishes and disseminates between these two, uh, two, two different strategies. Um, each one comes with its own advantages and disadvantages. But in the context of CRAN in general, based on the discussion we've gone through, it now becomes clearer than ever that, um, yes, we do have a lot of advantages coming up from, um, from, from CRAN. Um, it enables this sort of uh, separation between uh, between the, the control plane and uh, and and uh, and and the uh, data plane, and of course it um, it's a major improvement of traditional old systems because now you can actually run some very sophisticated algorithm based on this uh, on this cloud. Of course, the cloud you can run a lot of sophisticated algorithm. This is not just simply uh, limited to in a way signal processing algorithm but also maybe towards some of those ai based techniques something also we're going to be discussing in this particular tutorial later on um, but at the same time um, you can in uh, you can you can actually try to develop strong algorithm for efficient interference mitigation um, that's from a single CRAM perspective as we have discussed this does not come as if uh, at uh, at no cost of course you still have some basic limitations and challenges some of which are in fact related to the front hole link you may actually have some long delay because of these front hole links which may or not be may or may not be um, uh, available other issues is, are of course related to the fact that you have very strong processors you have a single link of failure uh, in 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 in, uh, in particular, so you, yeah, the CRAN may not always be able to solve many of the discrete optimization problems, especially some of those may actually be of excess, exhaustive exponential complexity. So um, at the same time, you have a single link of failure. So that's why it becomes very important to to think about distributing the intelligence, distributing the computation, distributing the communication. How to do these things jointly? How can we distribute the computation? the communication at the same time to keep the advantages that we have harnessed and we have discussed in the context of cloud radio access network so that's why in the in the next um, uh, couple of uh, in, or in the rest of the, the this particular tutorial we're going to start touching up on um, much more complex systems related to multiple cloud radio access networks and also to some of those hybrid cloud and mobile edge computers, something we're going to be discussing. We're going to be also uh, seeing them uh, in terms of several applications. Some of them are related to rate splitting, but also some others are related to uh, XR, extended reality systems. And also we're going to be touching upon a few things related to AI, as my colleagues and I will be uh, will be discussing uh, in the in the, in the rest of this particular tutorial. So I'm gonna stop here just to see whether uh, anyone would have any questions. I thank you all and will be looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you.